Welcome back to the video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, I want to talk about a, uh, a feature that's very similar to sessions. So we previously saw sessions. We used this with session to add the information about the user, either on a successful login or on creating, uh, creating a new user, so that our task list could pull in the appropriate user's information. Now, of course, sessions just use encrypted cookies. Now you can add your own cookies. There is a with cookies on here. Uh, I'm not going to go into any details about it, but there's a type called a cookie that you can put all of the significant information uh, in there and pack them for whatever it is you're doing. Uh, honestly, for a lot of modern tasks, if you're trying to store stuff on the client side, you'd probably want to use local storage instead. Um, but there is a very common task that that is that uses cookies that's so common that play has a feature for it and that is called flash so the with session creates this encrypted field that is long term the idea of flash is that it gives you a little bit of extra information that is only available for the next request okay and so it's typically used for things like error messages or success messages we have some of those things here. You might have noticed our website is pretty non-responsive in the situation where I type in a bad username. I just come back to the login page. Okay, and nothing tells me what happened. I don't get a message saying that I had an invalid uh, username and password. I just got back here and my fields were cleared out. That's, that's not very user-friendly. Similar, similarly, when I create a user, and we go to the listing page, we just get thrown there, and uh, you know it looks like things worked, but, but we don't know really what's going on. Flash is intended to address this. Because it only sticks around for one call, it will immediately go away after that, and so you can stick these things on the page that comes up appropriately if they actually exist. So let's look at this. So for example, if we fail a login, instead of with session, we could say with, or sorry, um, it's not with for this one, it is flashing, uh, which where you can either pass in an object of type flash or a number of tuples. And I'm going to go for the second one. I'll give it a key of error and a value of invalid username password combination. Okay, standard type of response that doesn't give them any information about whether it was the username or the password that failed. We just drop them into here and say there, there was a problem with it. We could add a similar type of thing to our create user. Remember, this happens if you try to create a user uh, that already exists. User creation failed. Okay, Not a very informative message, but once again, if you're trying to deal with uh, hacking situations, you often don't want to provide too much information, but we do want to provide enough. So what should happen to these? Well. This should go in, in case that both of these would be displayed on our login page. How would we get them there? Well, we need to pass in to here the information that we want. And we could have it so that our controller specifically pulled out the information. There is, just like there is a request.session that we use down here, there is a request.flash that you can use. And if that fits your needs, that's great. But sometimes it doesn't. Okay, now when would it not? Uh, in this case, for error messages or success messages, very simple types of, of messages, um, it's just nice to have them automatically go on the page. And it would be nice if we didn't have to add them to every single page, okay? Because my login page might have some things, my task list page might have others. Recall that both login and task list use main. Okay, so the approach we're going to take here is we want to try to get this information all the way from the, from the controller and the flashing where we added this through the next route or wherever it is. In this case, for both of those, it would come back to login 
to the login page, to the main, and then display here. And this way would be completely generic across all of our pages. So how do we do that? Well, first I need to get it to come to the login page. And I'm going to do this by passing another implicit parameter here. So whereas previously I had this request header, which allowed us to get the CSRF form field, in this case, I am also going to pass in the flash implicitly. Now, let's do a recompile. Notice that's happy. And this is actually part of the reason for implicit parameters. I didn't say to pass this anywhere, but the flash is implicitly part of the request header. And so the things that are every time uh, that we call login, it turns out we already have an implicit request. So it just works. Uh, if our validate, uh, that's, a, that's a post, that's a post, yeah, yeah. Uh, the task list also has an implicit request. So at least at this level, that will work for everything. Now, the next step I'm gonna take though is gonna break some stuff. And that's because I don't really want this on the login page. I don't wanna manually add it to every one of my end pages. I want it so that the main naturally handles this. So I'm actually going to add another argument to my main, and it's going to be a, an implicit argument list that matches the one that we put on login. Okay, now let's try compiling with that. Oh, we have problems. Okay. Uh, couldn't not find implicit parameter for flash, and this is inside of index. Uh, we didn't even write index, but index uses main. Okay, and that's how we broke things, is that the pages that have already existed, like index, well, index is going to have to have an implicit flash in it for it to compile. That's really all we had to add, because when the index comes up, or, well, assuming that we have an, an implicit request available when we call index, we'll find out about that in just a second. I also need it on my task list, because task list calls main. We didn't see that error message, but I'm just predicting that if I don't add it there, I'll get that error message. Okay, our application index did not have an implicit request. Once again, that was code that we hadn't written. but it's not hard for us to add. And there we go. So let's try one more time. That pulls it up. Now we're not doing anything with that flash. The whole point of this was to get that into main so that main could potentially display things. So flash uh, is a map-like structure. Um, and just to show what we can do with this, let's go ahead and let's do flash.get of an error. Now, that will produce an option, uh, which would be a sum or a none. That could actually be kind of interesting to look at potentially. Refresh. Remember, this went on to uh, every single page. The none doesn't actually print anything. What happens now if I invalid username password combination? There we go. Okay, so the nuns don't print out. So if I just leave it at that, it will only print something when I have a an error and nothing if I, if I don't. Uh, because this is an error, I'd probably actually want to map it and put some uh, some HTML tags, maybe turn it red or, or whatnot, give it some CSS to make it so it jumps out to the user. But for our purposes here, this is enough. From this point on, because we've gotten this into our main, every time we make a view, we will need to pass in an implicit flash. But all we have to do to get this so that it works is to make it so that when we want to send a message to the user, an error in particular, we just put a flashing of error. We could also add something like a flash.get success. 
so that if things went well, this would pop up. Now, right now, if both of these pop up, it's probably not going to, to look very good. Um, once again, there would be better ways of, of dealing with these two options and combining them and putting things like the appropriate color coding on them so that errors are red, successes are green, stuff like that. But this shows you the general usage of how you can use Flash so that your main will display messages in a highly generic way that's very easy for you to do from the part of the controller where you are from the part of your code inside the controller where you actually know that something went wrong. And of course that message will disappear after one uh, after it's displayed one time. And that's exactly what we want for these types of messages.